Uh, I'm Perry Tung from uh, Bonhams Auctioneers in Toronto, and I'm one of the specialists there. How long have you been with Bonhams? Uh, I come up to five years in January. Wow. Yeah. Um, so what led you into this field? Um, I actually, I worked for a local auction house in Toronto before, and um, I answered an ad in the newspaper looking for an auctioneer's assistant, some heavy lifting. Um, I have a degree in art history, um, so then it just went from there. I started as a porter and worked my way up in, in the, uh, into the art department. Now is there a, f a field of specialty that you... Um, for myself, all my colleagues who I'm traveling with have different specialties. We have a gemologist with us. Um, my colleague Jack, who's president of Bonhams Canada, who's very good with silver and Chinese porcelain. Um, my area is 19th, uh, 19th and 20th century paintings, Canadian art, contemporary art, two-dimensional things. I would say I'm the two-dimensional specialist. <laughs> so. Okay, so tell me about uh, over the five years, yes. what have been some of the more interesting things that you've encountered? And over my time at Bonhams, the, the one that sticks out in my mind was we were doing uh, one of these clinics or one of these fundraisers at a, um, a, a local public gallery and this gentleman walked in and he had two paintings wrapped in a towel. And I, we always like that because we never know what we're going to see. And he didn't book ahead, he booked on the day. And he was given to me, it was Canadian art, and I unwrapped one of them and there was an A.Y. Jackson sitting there. I'm like, oh, that's nice. And he said, yeah, I bought these from a friend of mine who needed money at the time. I'm like, okay. And then he unwrapped the other one, it was a J.E.H. McDonald. And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. And he goes, yeah, I think I paid like $10,000 for them, for the two. And he said, I've always been curious what they're worth. So I look up Jackson and I'm looking through auction records and I said, yeah, you're going to make your money back here. It's going to be 10, 15,000. So then I go over to my colleague and I'm holding this painting in front of his face and it was a very important painting for McDonald's time when he was out in Nova Scotia, when he was on the East Coast, uh, visiting uh, another colleague who was teaching out there. And I said, this is important. This is like, you know, not a $10,000 picture or $5,000 picture, I should say. So I came back to him came up with the value and I said, it's actually worth fifty to seventy thousand dollars. And he burst into tears. And I'm like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> Would you like a Kleenex? Would you like some water? Um, he didn't want to be interviewed, like he, he wrapped them back up, didn't want to be interviewed, and left. And we, I didn't hear a thing from him until about a year later and he called me and he wanted to sell them. And um, we ended up offering them for auction. One of them sold. Unfortunately, the, the consigner passed away before he could see the other one sell. So he, uh, what I didn't know behind all this, he was suffering from, I think he had cancer, and his friend, it was this whole backstory. And it's those backstories that we love. I, I was, my next question was going to be then, uh, how much of those incredible stories did you think that you were going to be such a big part of what you do? Um, it, it, I, you sort of, it, I guess in a way you become, you, we see so many different things and we give values to things, like, you know, we see a group of seven painting or we see a, a 19th century English watercolor, but then there's also those stories that you talk about and that, even though, you know, we may put $200 on a watercolor, but the story behind that is that more important. There's another instance where somebody brought in a, a painting that was done by an artist who went down on the Titanic. and. The painting wasn't worth a lot of money, but it was because of where he had been and what he had done. And those things really make it interesting for us. Like, you know, it, that's the important part, we feel. Now, have you ever had a, a situation where someone has brought something in that they knew in their heart of hearts, they were convinced that it was worth big bucks, only to find out that it was worth absolutely nothing? It, we do get that a lot. Um, a lot of the time people, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes now with, with new technology. Is it a print? Is it a watercolor? Is it a painting? Um, we've had a couple of instances where people have been told things, uh, you know, they've been given the story by maybe it was passed down in the family and it was important and we have to tell them, well, actually, no, it, it, there's no way it can be because either the date is wrong, the artist wasn't alive when he painted this, or those kind of things and you know we, we are nice about it because it's somebody's item it's somebody's thing that they have this great story about um, what is 
the, your favorite part of the job personally? My favorite part of the job it definitely is meeting the different people, the clients. Um, they make it fun. You know, we look at we get to look at great things, but it's those people that we start talking to, and it's like mini sessions that we have almost okay. that yeah. we have this momentary sort of connection with somebody else who is telling us all about this object, and it, it's amazing. What advice would you have for people that are coming this weekend to the WAG? Um, my advice would be bring us those things that you've always been curious about, those things that are in the closet, um, wrapped up, or maybe even hanging over the fireplace that, you know, your grandfather told you or your grandmother told you that that was done by famous artists. Bring those in and, you know, and they obviously have great stories behind them. We'd love to hear it and we'd love to see them and maybe tell you something about them.